Hey guys, welcome back to A-Level Lessons. Right, in this video, we're going to be looking at our macroeconomics, looking at our first ever policy that we're going to be covering on this channel for macroecon specifically. Right, looking at this thing called fiscal policy. Right, fiscal policy is going to be a prime example, okay, a prime policy that you guys will be using when it comes to managing the various causes of be it poor economic growth, high rates of inflation, high rates of unemployment or unfavorable balance of payments positions. So fiscal policy will be a very crucial policy that tends to be implemented by the government right? when the government intervenes. So what is the definition of this thing called fiscal policy? It is essentially the use of government expenditure and taxation to influence the level of economic activity. So the use of government expenditure, as we have learned before, this under AD falls as your G. Right? So how are we going to influence G such that our AD will also be influenced? This we will examine later on. Taxation, it will be denoted by T for taxation. Some schools may use different den, uh, different ways to denote taxation. So taxation looks at two things. We will also uh, discuss it later, later on. It looks at personal income tax as well as corporate income tax. Right, these two will influence C and I, which hence influences AD as well. So you'll notice that when it comes to fiscal policy, the aim is to influence AD so that we can either increase AD to ensure that economic growth is achieved or we can aim to reduce AD assuming that the economy is at full employment to actually help us in reducing inflation. We'll look at how it works in videos to come as well. And in this video itself, let's move on first. So fiscal policy can be broken down into two types. Non-discretionary, right, means that it is not handled by us. Non-discretionary, we don't get to decide. And discretionary fiscal policy. So discretionary is further broken down into expansionary and contractionary fiscal policy. So as the name suggests, expansionary essentially denotes that it helps to expand the economy, which is a good thing, right? Contractionary aims to contract the economy, which can also be a good thing depending on what the current economic situation is in that economy. Let us first look at the non-discretionary fiscal policy. So non-discretionary, right, you guys can go and search out what the meaning of non-discretionary is. Essentially, it means that we are relying on this mechanism called automatic stabilizers. So Non-discretionary fiscal policy does not actually involve or directly involve the government tweaking its spending levels or taxes to actually help the market to become either more favorable or to improve the situation in an economy. It looks at things that helps an economy to stabilize itself automatically. So firstly, an example would be the progressive tax structure, whereby higher income earners are basically taxed more as compared to your lower income earners. In Singapore, we call this the wealth taxes, whereby the higher income, right, naturally, if you have higher income, you should be taxed more, right, because you're earning so much more than the rest of society. So as a result, as they are being taxed more, more tax revenue is gained from them, and lower income are not taxed as much, it helps to ensure that society remains equitable for all, right? It helps to lessen the income inequality that exists in the economy. Another one would be known as transfer payments, which refers to unemployment benefits. So for instance, during a recession, right, incomes are falling, household incomes are falling, naturally a lot of people's purchasing power would fall, leading to a fall in consumption, which leads to a fall in AD and further recession. So hence, more unemployment benefits can be given out, right? This occurs automatically as people are being retrenched. So this will in turn increase tax revenue as greater consumption is born, right? As 
unemployment benefits right, in the form of let's say cash payouts where right, you subsidize or you give discount vouchers to households it helps them to increase their consumption given that they are not earning an income hence allowing for your overall tax revenue to increase so transfer payments in the form of unemployment benefits can help an economy in the times of a recession so take a minute to absorb that or if you need to replay that part of the video i know that it may have been a bit fast go ahead and replay it i think it is very very important to understand what automatic stabilizers are all about so essentially most economies will adopt this automatic stabilizers right different economies will have different approaches to their fiscal policy Moving on, we have got discretionary fiscal policy, meaning that it is something that we that are directly involved in, in the case of your government. So it aims to influence AD through deliberate changes in your government expenditure and taxes, so G and T respectively, in response to any change in economic activity. For instance, if let's say there is a recession going on, Naturally, it means that AD is decreasing. So fiscal policy can be implemented to do the opposite, right? To counter this fall in AD, it will help to rise or increase the AD in order to ensure that the economy remains functional, it remains stable. Firstly, we have got the expansionary fiscal policy. So during a recession, the government can deliberately increase your government spending or reduce your tax rates. This, like I said just now, is your personal income and your corporate tax rates. So how does this actually help? Right? With lower tax rates in the form of personal income tax, when personal income tax is reduced, consumers would actually gain greater disposable income. Right? Disposable income is the income that is generated after taxes have been paid off so this will increase their consumption especially on big ticket items for investors or firms it is the opposite right when you have a fall in corporate tax rates you do not consume more but you have a greater willingness to actually invest so because your after tax profits after corporate taxes have been deducted have increased, firms can now increase their investments on new capital goods as well as things like R&D, which is research and development to ensure that growth is sustained in both the short run and the long run. So both an increase in C and I or G would increase your AD, right? Expansionary fiscal policy aims to actually boost your overall level of AD so that your economic growth can be sustained and assuming that they are below full employment. Econs is all about assumptions. So we have to assume that the economy is operating below full employment in order for our real GDP to be increased by a multiplied extent. Right? As we have learned before in the multiplier effect, if the economy is operating at full employment what actually happens is that a rise in ad would cause your inflation to rise because your general price level will increase instead right so if only we are below full employment will there be greater economic growth and stimulation in the economy contractionary po uh, fiscal policy is the opposite it contracts the economy meaning to say that your ad will fall so this would be used to curb demand pool inflation, right? When inflation rates are high and assuming that the economy is operating at full employment, this is the only way whereby a fall in AD would lead to a beneficial outcome in the economy. Because if the economy is operating below full employment, what actually happens is that you will end up with a multiplied a reverse multiplier effect, hence real GDP will fall instead by a greater extent leading to worsened negative or low economic growth which is not desirable. 
So in this case, the government may actually deliberately cut spending or increase taxes in the form of personal income and corporate tax rates. Right? By doing so, consumers would have a lesser disposable income to consume, leading to a fall in their consumption on big ticket items. Right? So C will fall. And likewise, for investors, it's basically the opposite of expansionary fiscal policy. They would actually have lower after-tax profits, hence a fall in I, their investments on capital goods, as they are less willing and less able to actually invest. So a fall in CI or G would cause your AD to fall, hence assuming that the economy is operating at full employment. So it's at along the AS vertical curve, okay, the AS side is the vertical section, right? This will lead to a fall in your general price level. Hence, your demand pool inflation can be kept to a minimal. It can be lessened and ensure that the rate is stable. So contractionary fiscal policy can be used to target that as well. So let's look at what are some of the limitations of fiscal policy. This would be the same for monetary policy in exchange rate and interest rate as well as supply side policy. They all have their own limitations to every other policy. So in reality, imperfect information exists. We have learned this in microeconomics. So this could limit the extent to which the fiscal policy is effective. For example, the government may increase government spending by too great an, an amount, right? And that could lead to issues in AD. Size of multiplier also matters because a smaller rise in CNI for a smaller multiplier will mean that the impact is actually smaller, right? On your real GDP. So if that is the case, if recession, the recession rate is actually greater than the rate of rise in CNI, this could actually mean that the economy is still going to go down in a recession instead, right? They may not be able to be saved by the fiscal policy. Government budget, right? So if the government is facing a budget deficit, what happens is that it means that they do not have enough funds to increase G and reduce T, right? Because if you reduce taxes, right, what happens is that your tax revenue also decreases, which means that your budget will also worsen. So this could mean that your fiscal policy would no longer be feasible. So when it comes to fiscal policy, government budget, the amount of money that a government has is extremely, extremely important. Right. Lastly, we have expectation of consumers and investors. So if they adopt a very bleak outlook, they think that the economy is not going to tide through this recession. Even if taxes fall, they may not be willing to increase their consumption nor investment. Very, very common, right? Think of yourself in the shoes of a consumer, right? And you're facing a recession. Even if taxes have dropped, right? It may not actually incentivize you to one to actually spend more and consume more, right? Firstly, because there may not even be a need to. And secondly, because you feel that, you know, you run a greater risk of losing money during this period. So your exam requirements for this entire chapter, I know it's a bit of a longer video, but it's very, very crucial, right? Fiscal policy is a good policy that can be used in many countries. So you have to be able to explain and discuss how this fiscal policy will affect an economy in terms of its macroeconomic goals. So like I've mentioned just now, macro goals, you can look at your economic growth. Let's say during a recession, you can look at how it manages inflation. And economic growth will usually tie in with unemployment. And lastly, you can also look at your balance of payments. We did not discuss it here. I will discuss it more under my YouTube memberships and Patreon. So if you want, you can check that out and find out from there more information. So the other one would be to be able to discuss whether this fiscal policy is a better policy as compared to other policies in correcting such issues in the macroeconomy. So under my YouTube memberships and Patreon, I will be covering a very in-depth video as well as lecture series on how fiscal policy leads to trade-offs in the economy as well, right? That is also important for you to know because it doesn't mean that an increase in G, an increase in taxes would definitely have a good outcome on the economy, right? So we have to look at what are some of the issues that will arise and how can we patch up those issues with other policies as well. 
So all of these are a bit of the higher level stuff that you need to start thinking about if you want to secure their A, which I'll be covering on those and I'll leave those uh, links for the Patreon and YouTube memberships in the description below. Alright, so that's all for this video on fiscal policy. Quite a fun little policy that you guys would be studying. So I'll see you guys in the next video for econs on your monetary policy, right? Centered on interest rates and exchange rates. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like as well as to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. And if you have any questions, you can always leave it in the comment section below and I will answer them as well. Alright, so till then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.